Praise the Lord. God is good this morning. We want to thank everybody for joining us on our live stream. We pray that you worship along there in your home just like you were here in person. Clap along, raise your hands, sing along, worship with us this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you for your spirit that we feel in this place. I pray that your presence would come down in each and every home where we are being watched this morning, Father, that you would just touch each and every one, Father. Move upon our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. When we can't gather together in person, I pray that you would help us to be in a mindset of worship right where we are at. We love you, Father. We thank you for all things. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. We pray, Father, that you bless each and every one with protection and safety and healing this morning, Father. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Worship along with us. worthy of our praise this morning. Hallelujah. Before we turn the service over to our pastor to bring us the word of God, we just want to remind our church family that we have online giving set up at nbgchurchofgod.com. That's nbgchurchofgod.com where you can continue to mail in your tithes and offerings if you wish to continue to give to the church. I just want to encourage you that right now your uh, generosity to God's kingdom is possibly more important than ever. Brother Oliver, would you Praise the Lord. I want to say good morning to everyone. 
thank God for his love and grace. Thank him for watching over and keeping us safe another week. Pray that God will continue to watch over us and keep us and help us to honor him and glorify his name today. I thank those that are here today and I want to say again we miss you in an extreme way. We wish you were here with us soon, hopefully. One of these days we will be back together again to worship God together and I'm looking for that forward to that time for a great time in the Lord and I'm looking forward to the Lord this morning. I feel God's presence. Thank him for touching us already and as we worship him this morning, let's worship him together. This morning I want to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Seems like every so often the Lord brings me back to this chapter and maybe it's to remind me of more than it is others how I'm supposed to act, how I'm supposed to treat others, how I'm supposed to love others, and I thank God today for his goodness. So as we read the scriptures, read along with us. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity voneth not itself, is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. For I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. Now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. How does love behave? Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we love you today. We ask you, Lord, to move in each and every family in our church and everyone that's listening, God, today. and our city, our county, our state, our nation, around this world, God, we pray for victory over this virus. We ask you, Lord, to move in each individual family's life, God. You know the needs that are there. The need is healing. The need is strength. If the need is encouragement. Whatever the need may be, Lord, I pray that you would minister to each and every one today in a special way. And, Lord, we just ask you for your anointing and your presence to go forth through this, God, that lives will be touched and changed. And, Lord, there's a one listening today that doesn't know you as their personal Savior. I pray, Lord, that you would touch their life and, Lord, reveal to them their great need. And, God, that your forgiveness is real and your forgiveness is for today. Jesus, we love you this morning. We thank you for your many blessings of life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Chapter 13 follows chapter 12, which is about the gifts of the Spirit. And at the conclusion of the preceding chapter 12, the apostle promised to show the Corinthians a more excellent way than how they had been living and proceeding with one another. You see, they were so distracted with contentions. They were divided by parties. They were envious of each other's gifts. You see, that unity was just almost completely destroyed in their midst. When there's division, when there's all these things going on, it's proof that we don't love each other. And if we don't love each other, that's proof that we don't really love God. And consequently, we don't have a real Christ 
feeling of Christianity in our heart or the love of God in our heart when we are in this state of mind and affairs. Paul had corrected many things through his instructions and guidance and teaching. He had taught them many things about their outward life, how they were to walk and please God. But now he was, this chapter here, he was turning his attention inward to the spirit we are to walk in, to the temper we are supposed to have, and to the disposition that we must have to live a life as a Christian so we'll be effective for the kingdom of God. So Paul begins to write this chapter and he talks about all the things that he could do, all the things that he could give, all how he could act, and he said, it would not benefit me or the kingdom of God if I don't have love. And the love we want to talk about today is not a Hollywood love, and it's not the love this world portrays, but it's the love of God that should be in our hearts. Lord, help us to show true love. And in this chapter, as we study, as we read it, we find the gifts of the Spirit. You know, the, the gifts of the Spirit are for more for power and not character. The fruit of the Spirit is more for character and not for power, but when we have a proper mix of these two in our lives, when we allow the gifts of the Spirit to flow through us and we have the, the fruits of the Spirit in the proper mixture in our life, it's then that our life gives a powerful testimony for God. How we need to lift him up today. And you see this chapter describes our relationship to each other. It also describes how we're supposed to treat each other as Christians. Thank God for the word of God that corrects me. It tells me how I'm supposed to live, how I'm supposed to treat you, how you're supposed to treat me and each other. And I know during this uh, health crisis... We're at home with our family, and I pray that we are Christians in our home, because if we are not Christians in our homes, we cannot be Christian anywhere. Lord, help us to show the proper love and attitude and disposition to everyone we meet, but especially at home to our loved ones. You see, in verse number four, it begins by, Paul begins here by talking about love suffering. Charity suffereth long, or love suffers long. The fruit of the Spirit here is long-suffering. And as we go through this, you will notice that the fruit of the Spirit, some of them are used in more than one context. The Bible says here that charity suffereth long. In other words, uh, if we really love someone, if we really love each other, we look for the best in each other, and we, we overlook some things, and we're passive in our response and we're passive in our attitude back towards someone if we are being, feel we're being wronged or done in some harmful manner. Charity is kind. Love is kind. Kindness is the fruit of the Spirit. You see, kindness is active. It does good. Kindness always did good. It endures evil. It gives blessings. Amen. God help us to be kind to each other. Kindness is a wonderful fruit of the Spirit. Charity envieth not there in verse 4. <clears throat> Goodness is the fruit of the Spirit. We don't envy each other for what someone else accomplishes. We don't envy someone else for what they attain. You see, envy is a face with many different manifestations. When we begin to study about envy, some of the names that you can associate with envy is malice, holding a grudge, jealousy, evil thoughts about others. And each one of these has a, a multitude of uh, manifestations that are manifested through our life when we give in to envy. Envy is ugly. If you've ever had envy to rise up against you or you've ever realized that it's working through you, God help us to realize how ugly it is and how unbecoming it is as a Christian. 
Verse number four, it says, Charity voneth not itself, is not puffed up. Meekness. Love doesn't show off. Love does not uh, do things to be seen of others. Love can do things silently for the benefit and for the good of someone else. Love doesn't brag. Love is not haughty. Love doesn't go around with a chip on its shoulder. You see, envy is a kind of a self-inflated arrogance that we attitude that we have about ourselves. Lord, help us to suffer long. Help us to endure. Help us to put up with some wrongs. Help us to be long-suffering, God. Help us to be kind. Help us to show goodness through our life and help us to be meek as the Bible tells us to be meek. Thank God for the love of, the love of God that flows in our heart, that grows in our heart, and God's still working on us. Lord, help me to allow you to work on me, to change me, to be what you want me to be. Love's behavior. You see in verse number 5, the Bible says there, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. Charity doesn't behave itself unseemly. Paul said, you're the church in Corinth. And I believe he's saying this to you and I. You see, the fruit of the Spirit here is temperance or self-control. By the help and aid of the Word of God and the Holy Ghost, we should be in control of our own spirit. God help us to be in control that we don't manifest thoughts and actions that say we're not a Christian. You see, vulgar talk is alien to love. Vulgar talk has its root in selfishness. We need to be in control of ourselves. I read this somewhere in a book. It said, and I agree with it 100%, noble manners is the fruit of noble minds. God help us to have good manners. Help us to show it to others. In 1 Peter, he said, be courteous. Be nice to each other. Show each other love. Don't behave in a way that is contrary to the Word of God. Charity seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, meekness again. Lord, help us not to be self-seeking, not to be self-centered, not to always be I, me, my in the conversation all the time. Lord, help me to be Christ-centered. You see... I read this little illustration that says, you know, if we really have the love of God in our heart, it's just like when an, a spark of fire falls into the sea, the fire extinguishes the spark. It extinguishes the fire. It puts it out. And if evil falls into a heart of love, that heart of love extinguishes the evil. It does not allow the soul to become disquieted, but we maintain our composure. We maintain our behavior. We remain meek and in self-control before God. Though other people are doing wrong and acting wrong and doing many things, God help me to be in control. You see, another writer I read after says, love writes our personal wrongs in ashes or water. If we write our personal wrong in ashes, the wind blows them away. If we write our personal wrongs in a pool of water, the water covers it up. That's the way love does that's the way we should treat each other. When someone does us wrong, when someone says evil of us, we should forgive them, and we should forget it. Lord, help us to be like Christ. You see, love not only uh, behaves right and suffers long, there's joy in love. In verse number 6, the Bible says, Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. In other words, the joy of the Lord does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in truth. Lord, help us that we don't rejoice at sin. Lord, help us that we don't rejoice at those who fall into sin. Help us, Lord, that we don't rejoice and be happy about those who are committing sin. But, Lord, help us to be happy about the truth of God 
and those who are walking in the truth and help us to rejoice in the truth that God is God and we love Him and He loves us. You see, Acts 11 and 23, the writer says there, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. The writer said when he came to this place and he saw the grace of God in action, he was happy for them. We should be happy for each other when God blesses or moves in our life. When God works a miracle for someone, we should rejoice with them and not envy them. You see, when you read in the book of Acts about the church at Jerusalem, it rejoiced at all the things that God was doing through those apostles, even among the Gentiles, God was working miracles. And the church at Jerusalem rejoiced. Whenever we hear a good report about someone getting saved, whenever we hear a good report about someone being healed, when we hear a good report about someone receiving a miracle from God, we should rejoice with them and praise God with them for the miracle that God has done. There is joy in love. We should rejoice in the fact that there is truth that does not falter, it does not change. The truth of God's Word remains the same from generation to generation. It'll be the same for me as it is for my children and again for their children. Thank God for the truth that sets us free. Thank God for His love and grace. You see, love not only has joy, but in verse number 7, the Bible says it bears long. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Praise the Lord. Charity beareth real, true love. The love of God in our heart can bear up in whatever comes our way. Because the Bible tells us in the next chapter of Corinthians that God will not allow anything to come upon us, but we're able to bear it. And whatever temptation comes our way, He will make a way of escape but it's our choice to take that way. Help us, Lord, to bear up and be gentle. Charity beareth all things. We are gentle. We endure wrongs. We endure evils. And we cover them with a silence. We don't broadcast them. When we see something wrong, we don't broadcast it about others, but we pray for them and we tell them we care about them and we lift them up and tell them God forgives and will make a way. You see, gentleness, gentleness goes a long way in God's kingdom about having an effect on others. Thank God for gentleness. Lord, help me to be gentle. Believeth all things. Faith. We need to have faith today like never before. We're in the middle of a crisis. The numbers in Kentucky seem to, this virus seem to be going up, not down. Lord, help us they have faith in God. If there's ever been a time we need to exercise our faith in God, it's the day we're living in. We need to trust Him through this. We need to be wise. We need to listen. We need to obey. But we need to have faith in God. You see, sometimes if we're not careful, we as Christians lose sight of the faith of truth and hope. There is hope in the truth of God's Word. You see, it is a gift and a grace to have hope in God. Today my hope's in the Lord. I thank God for all our doctors are doing, everyone that's doing something to try to combat this crisis that we're in. I praise God for them. I pray for them daily. I ask God to bless them, protect them, and help them. But my hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, that He will move in such a way that He gets the glory if he moves through a person and brings a cure, however he does it, I pray that he gets all the praise and all the glory because my trust is in him. My hope's in him. I trust him today that he's on the scene. He knows all about it and he's taking action to bring about victory. But Lord, help us to be in subjection unto him that he can work in our lives and do what he wants to do in our lives during this crisis. He works all the things together for good to them that love God, who are born-again Christians, 
who are walking in obedience. He will even use this circumstance for your good and my good if we can but trust him. You see, the Bible also says there in that verse, endureth all things, patience and long-suffering again. I mean, he's had to endure some things this week. I have went through some things, not of my making, not of my choosing, but caught up in it. And I had to endure some things. And I had to be long-suffering and not critical, amen. But God help us. You see, whether it's 70 times 7, the offensive of a brother or someone else, if we're suffering wrong while we're doing good, we need to have patience and long-suffering. The Bible not only is telling us here in this chapter how we treat our family, how we treat our fellow church people. It's telling us how we treat others in the world, that we're long-suffering, that we're patient. You see, these verses in chapter 13 give us a picture of the life and the character of Jesus Christ. When you begin to study the life of Jesus in the Gospels and you read this chapter, you begin to see Jesus in this chapter. God help us to be like him. Lord, help us to walk with you today and be what you want us to be. Lord, help us to live the life, to bear the character of Jesus Christ, whether we're in good times or bad times, whether we're in times of victory or in times of crisis. Lord, help us to portray Jesus Christ through our life. And help us, Lord, to treat others the way you expect us to treat them, not the way we might have been taught, not the way we might have been instructed growing up, but Lord, help us to come to a conclusion that your word is the best way. And Lord, help us to follow you. Help us to treat others the way you expect us to treat others. The way that we would want to be treated if we were on the opposite side. And then the last verse. I want to skip down to the last verse in closing. The Bible says there in verse 13, And now abideth faith, hope, and charity or love, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. When he came down to the final conclusion of the chapter to the church and to us, he said, there abideth faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Just for a moment. Now I tell you, love is the root of faith and hope. Praise God. You see, we believe in that which we love. We have hope for that which we love. Amen. Love is greatest because love is for our neighbors and faith and hope is mainly for ourselves. Lord, help us to love others. Love is greater because faith and hope are human and God is love. I know I've went over some of these several times, but can we, can we uh, set our minds and our hearts to study and follow the Word of God? Can we treat each other and act the way God wants us to? Love is greatest because faith and hope can only work because of love. God, help us to love and help us to show ourselves faithful to you. You see, faith and hope are precious stones. But love is a precious diamond, amen, that's got many facets. God, help us to show the love of God in our heart. Help us to treat each other with love and respect and gentleness and kindness. But Lord, help us to look to you with faith and hope. And Lord, help us to be in subjection to you that you can move in my life and the lives of everyone that's with us today and touch us and change us and make us different for your glory. Lord, help me today to surrender unto you everything about my life. Lord, help me to take this chapter, embrace it, and put it to work in my life in a greater way than ever before. Father, help us to walk in love. Help us to behave the way, Lord, the way that you want us to. You see, so many times people get lust and love mixed up. But when we love people, we want what's best for them. When we're operating in a spirit of lust, we want what's best for us. We want the things that benefit us. 
the things that are good for us. But when we love others, we are willing to sacrifice self for their benefit. Lord, help us to walk in the love of God. You see, because when we love others, it proves that we love God. If we don't love other people, it proves that we don't love God. I believe it's in 1 John, 2 John somewhere. It says, if we don't love our brother whom we have seen, how can we love God whom we haven't seen? Lord, help us to walk in love today. The kind of love that the Bible tells us about. Not the kind of love the world tells us about. Lord, help us today to walk in you. Can we pray today and ask God to ingrain the scripture in our hearts and minds that we might allow it to change whatever God wants to change in us. God, help us to behave through this crisis the way you want us to. Lord, I love you this morning. I pray there's a one listening today who's not a Christian. I pray they would pray right where they are and give their heart to you. Ask you, Lord, to minister to every heart and every life. Help us, God, to draw nigh unto you. Lord, help us to allow your word to be control our lives. Help us to walk, Lord, in, in the love of God that you want us to walk in. And, Lord, I believe when we walk in your love, all the fruits of the Spirit will be manifested through our lives. And, Lord, I believe when we walk in the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit will be there, ready to operate as you orchestrate them in our lives. Help us, Lord, to love each other as you love us. And, Father, help us, Father, today as we lift up your name, heal those that are sick, touch those that are in need, bless those, God, that are in want. Help us, Lord, to be wise in our decisions. Help us, God, to rely on you and ask for your blessings and your, your, your goodness to be bestowed upon us. Lord, help us, Lord, to abide in your protection and, God, to be wise in our actions. Lord, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise God.
Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us this morning. We pray God goes with you, and you have a blessed week. Be blessed.